Hello, hello. This is the homework, and uh, it has 14 questions. I'm actually eliminating these two questions. Those are actually not uh, part of what would be on the midterm. And if you would turn it over on the back and make sure you put your name, and this assignment's called Chapter 7, Homework 5. Now, you could also be putting your work on another piece of paper, so don't just turn this in with uh, A, B, and C circled. You gotta have to, you will have to show me some work. So let's do the first question here. It says, what is the approximate volume of a sphere with a radius of 12 inches? Okay, so question number one. The volume of a sphere, sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So let's just do that. 12 to the power of 3. Well, that's the same thing as 4 thirds times pi times 12 times 12 times 12. That's what that means. Okay. And the answer choices we have are in terms of pi. So we want to hold off on multiplying by that pi. So we're really just concerned with multiplying the 4 times the 12 times the 12 times the 12. And then whatever we get, we can divide by 3. And then the pi, we will just leave out there on the side. So we can change the order of the multiplication. And so let's do that. The 4 times 12 times 12 times one more 12. 692. And then I can divide by 3. So I get 2304pi two, two, is my answer. And that looks like choice D. Cool. Now, question 2. A cylinder is shown to have a radius of 4. What is the volume? So it looks like they listed 10 as the inches as the height, four inches as the radius. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So it's, this one will be pretty straightforward, I think. The volume of a cylinder is the area of the base, which is a circle, times the height. And they've told us the radius is, oh, I wrote that wrong. So the radius here is four. Okay, so I meant to write the number four there. All right, so the radius is four. And the height is 10, so the volume would be 4 times 4 times 10. And it looks like my answer choices here are also in terms of pi. So I want to hold off on multiplying by pi just for the uh, sake of this question because they want my answer in terms of pi. So I'm just, I just want to know what 4 times 4 times 10 is. Great, 160 pi. When I look at my answer choices, that is selection A. Terrific. I look back here, I notice, yep, selection A. Next, what 3D solid is formed when I stack similar triangles? Ooh, so the word similar is different than the word congruent. So on question three, what 3D solid is made from stacking similar triangles? So I'm going to stack one triangle. And then this word similar kind of makes me think of mommy and baby. So similar should make you think that the triangles might be getting smaller or bigger. Right? Because similar doesn't mean congruent. So if I stacked another triangle on top of there, but I made the triangle small. You might be able to see what it is I would be creating. So I'm just kind of drawing a bunch of triangles on top of here. And those triangles vary in colors. So here's kind of a smaller triangle. We'll put an even smaller triangle on top of there. And another smaller triangle on top of there. Notice what I'm creating here looks like, oh, sorry, it looks like a triangular pyramid. Anything that's made by stacking things that are smaller is going to go to a point because it keeps going smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until I get to a point. And so those are called pyramids.
not prisms. And so pyramids have triangular faces. So even if I stacked uh, squares that got smaller, I would also be making pyramids and it would have triangular faces, but if I stacked squares that got smaller, it, had, it would have a square base. Here, not only does it have a triangular face, but it also has a triangular base, triangle base. So this would be called a triangular pyramid. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here and see which choice yeah, cone, no. Cones are made from stacking circles that are getting smaller. Triangular pyramids, that would be my selection. Triangular prisms are made from stacking triangles that are congruent or stay the same size. Rectangular prisms are from st stacking rectangles that stay the same size, are congruent. Okay, next question. Four, what could have been used to create the following object? Okay, so there's a variety of answers here. I'm gonna go over here to my uh, notes. Okay, so four, I'm just gonna get organized here a little bit. So I have question one, question two, Question three, looking good. So question four says, what could be used to create this object? Okay, so I think we just discussed this, is if I drew a circle, and then a circle that got smaller, and a circle that got smaller, and all of a sudden I have a point, you notice that I have a cone. All right, so a cone can be made by stacking circles that are getting smaller, and you can kind of see that in my picture. It reminds me of that little play toy of these uh, little circle shells that stack up. So cones are made by stacking uh, similar circles or, or circles that are getting smaller. I could also have taken a triangle, and here's my triangle, and spun it around. If I spun it around, I would be able to create a cone. Um, and so I, I think I made one of those in class. If I took a pencil and I glued a triangle to it, and I spun it in the air, you would visually see a very blurry, but very possibly, you would be able to see a cone. So let's compare that with our answer choices. Okay, so question four says, um, rotating a circle, well no, a circle would create a sphere. Stacking similar, ooh, I like this, stacking similar circles. Stacking congruent circles would make a cylinder. Rotating a rectangle would also give me a cylinder. Okay. We'll do a couple more and then I'll put the rest on the other tape. If a triangle, if I translate an octagon diagonally in space to form a solid, what 2D shape would be the lateral side? Oh, so I had this picture up on my board for uh, a very, very long time. So question five is really uh, figuring out if you remember my picture. So it's like if I took an octagon, now it might be a little hard for you guys to draw an octagon, but you can give it a try. So an octagon, we think of a stop sign. And then it says if I translate it diagonally in space. So now I'm gonna draw another octagon over here. Okay. So I had an octagon and I translated it, which means to move right or left, up or down, or a little of both. So I translated it over and up. And then it said, if I transformed it in space, and then I did that in order to create a solid. So I'm just gonna connect these lines. Okay. 
And this looks like a stacked stop sign, doesn't it? It says, what would I create with my lateral faces? And notice by translating shapes in space and then connecting their edges, we create parallelograms. Um, or you could also think of it as rectangles. So prisms, instead of being triangular faces like our pyramid, prisms create rectangular or parallelogram faces. Okay, and that's what this question's asking. So I'm gonna go back over to my answer choice and it says lateral sides. What two dimensional shape would be the lateral side? And there's my answer. The octagon would not be the lateral side, it would be the two bases. An octagonal prism is what I created, but they wanna know what 2D shape. So that's the 3D shape I created. And a rectangular prism is just a box, and that's not appropriate with what we're doing here. Thanks for joining us. Check out the next video for the remaining questions.